Hello, you're watching the Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Latin American and Caribbean movements call for unity. Palestinian detainees continue boycott of Israeli courts. Report shows major inequities in Indian healthcare. And three more Egyptian journalists released from pre-trial detention. In our first story today, the Third Continental Assembly of the ALBA movements concluded in Argentina on May 1st. The platform brings together over 400 progressive social movements and organizations across Latin America and the Caribbean. ALBA movements was formed in opposition to the free trade area of the Americas. It followed other regional integration platforms created by revolutionary leaders like Fidel Castro and Hugo Chavez. The platform is now expanding beyond the region to work with anti-capitalist and anti-imperialist movements and groups. 260 delegates from 23 countries arrived in Buenos Aires on April 27th to outline a united action plan. The five-day summit was organized along six issues or axes. These included internationalism and regional unity, decolonization, cooperation and defense of the planet. Delegates also discussed issues of democratization, sovereignty, popular feminism, and the economy. The gathering also emphasized the importance of the Cuban and Venezuelan struggles. Caribbean People's Assembly member Camille Chambers stated that imperialism could not control the region thanks to these revolutions. In the face of the crises of capitalism and neoliberalism, delegates emphasized the need for a socialist political project. Argentine delegates also called for the expulsion of NATO from the region, including its military base on the Falkland Islands. A key theme for the summit was also the ideological and cultural battle facing progressive social movements. Ecuadorian peasant leader Wilman Sarango presented proposals to strengthen ALBA's work, including political education schools and a people's media. We now take a look at Israel, which has renewed the administrative detention of 80-year-old Bashir Khairi. The Palestinian retired lawyer has been unlawfully held since December 2021. He was arrested in October during a night raid and then sent to the Ofer military prison. In November, an Israeli prosecutor submitted a list of charges related to Khairi's alleged ties to an unlawful organization. He was put under a six-month administrative detention on accusations that he posed an record imminent security threat. In response to the false charges, Khairi declared that he would boycott all further military proceedings. His detention was confirmed by the military court in the absence of Khairi and his legal counsel. Prior to his latest arrest, he had already spent 17 years in occupation prisons, having been arrested four times before. According to Israel's prison service, the number of Palestinian administrative detainees has reached a five-year high. Data shared with Haaretz shows that 579 Palestinians are being unlawfully and arbitrarily held. Detentions are issued based on secret evidence which is not shared with the detainee or their counsel. This is a violation of international fair trial principles and constitutes collective punishment. In response, hundreds of Palestinian detainees have implemented a total boycott of all Israeli military court for over 120 days now. The mass protest action is taking place amid a widespread arrest campaign in the occupied territories. 109 people were placed under administrative detention between March and April alone. A report by Oxfam has revealed major inequities in India's healthcare system. People from historically oppressed Dalit and Adivasi communities, categorized as scheduled castes and scheduled tribes by the Indian government, are living shorter lives of poorer quality. The private sector accounts for 62% of India's health infrastructure. According to the National Sample Survey, out-of-pocket expenditure for private inpatient care is 524% higher than in public facilities. As a result, access to health care remains largely unaffordable for the poor. 45.9% of Adivasis and 26.6% of Dalits fall in the country's lowest wealth quintile. Five out of six multidimensionally poor people in India belong to one of these groups. Due to high costs, only 4% of Adivasis and 15% of Dalits utilize private facilities. 
Oxfam has stated that both communities have faced systemic discrimination and a denial of basic services. On average, the lifespan of a Dalit woman is 15 years less than a non-Dalit or so-called so upper caste woman. 65% of women in the scheduled tribe category suffer from anemia. The percentage for non-scheduled tribe women is 47.6%. These inequalities are also starkly visible in access to prenatal care and vaccination. One study found that over 90% of Dalit children surveyed reported discrimination in the form of untouchability and dispensing of medicines. Inequalities have persisted under the national government's insurance program, the PMGAY. Dalits form only 1.6% of private admissions under the policy. The projected eligible population share was, however, 19.7%. Adivasis formed only 4% of admissions against the projected eligibility share of 15.4%. And for our final story, Egyptian authorities have released three journalists amid a series of pardons. Amer Abdul Monim, Hani Gresha and Esam Abdin were freed on May 1st after spending over a year in detention. They were released pending investigation and trial in three separate cases. The three are facing initial charges of misuse of social media and supposedly joining a terrorist group. Their release followed a week after 41 political prisoners were freed from pre-trial detention. They were being held on political charges and charges related to freedom of thought and expression. Among those released were journalist Muhammad Saleh and activist Walid Shawki, Haytham Al-Banna and Hassan Al-Barbari. Also released was activist Radwa Mohammed. They were all detained under the off-site charges of spreading false news and ties to a terrorist organization. According to the Arabic Network for Human Rights Information, 120,000 people were being held in Egyptian prisons in March 2021. An estimated 65,000 were political prisoners, out of which 26,000 were in pre-trial detention. Among those imprisoned are prominent activists, including Ala Abdel Fateh. On April 27th, Egypt pardoned prominent left-wing journalist Hossam Monis. He had been sentenced to four years in prison on false news charges. He was arrested in 2019 along with opposition leaders who were planning to contest in the 2020 elections. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.